everyone, and welcome back to Labeled, a brand in the making. I'm Ariel. And I'm John. And we have a great show for you today. Kind of what we were going back with the last episode, talking about before the brand. Mm -hmm. We're kind of going to dive deeper into it with John and what he does. Yes, it's all about me. (laughs) (laughs) His favorite. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) Um, So we had a meeting the other day with a designer, Mm -hmm. and I was so happy to be a part of that. And I'm so thankful. It was such a great experience. And we're kind of going to talk about how we get to that point Mm -hmm. and then what the meeting was about Mm -hmm. and kind of just the overall idea. Yeah, the the takeaways and like what what made that meeting so special and interesting and what... Everything about it, basically. (laughs) Yeah, and I kind of, I got to see more into John's world. Yeah. Like what he does with his online retail. Yes. Yes. (laughs) So I guess, how do you decide what's going to be in your store, first of all? Like what brands do you kind of lean towards? Like who is your targeted audience? So basically my target audience, my main primary target items are millennials you know obviously women that are between ages i don't know like 28 to like 30 some even to age 40 that's kind of like the industry or the like consumer standard based on that i kind of like look at different designers and see what kind of inspires me because obviously i'm a millennial but i also want to appeal to women that kind of don't (laughs) that are not afraid to like dress a certain way, that are interest, interested in more, um, I guess, unique pieces. Because right now with fashion, um, even before this whole pandemic started, fashion kind of has been very repetitive, at least for me, it's been very repetitive. There's not a lot of really interesting styles coming out or it's like they're reusing styles from previous seasons, which is fine, but I feel like it's kind of the same old style. Or a designer steals another style from another designer, it's the same, and it's something I've already seen, and we've talked about that before. Yes. <laughs> but, um, so I just, basically, I just go with what I, what with my gut, mostly, like, whatever looks, like, amazing, and, like, you know, it inspires me, and, like, I can see it styled in different ways, that's what I go with. But also, I kind of, um, Business-wise, I try to, um, I guess, I, I try to, like, have, like, a good mix of different styles. So, like, a good mix of dresses, a good mix of uh, pants, shirts, jackets, blazers, coats. Um, don't have handbags or shoes yet, but if I wear, like, what type of handbag? Um, just, like, a good even distribution of different um, styles. And then I look into, like, how... Um, which style is the same? Like, if this one's from this designer is the same as the this other style from another designer, which one will I? Which one do I buy? I'll usually base it off of like either price point if it's if it's reasonably priced for me to put into my store, or if I know that it's one of it's like a bestseller. Usually, a lot of these designers will say, "Oh, it's a bestseller," you know, and I'll be like, "Okay, it's a bestseller." And but if it's a if it's a brand that's like recognizable here in the states, yeah. then it's then the best sellers definitely you would want to buy. But if it's not, then the best sellers mostly best sold in their home country. So that could be a little bit of that's something that you'll have to think about, and that could be a little hard to kind of get the customer that is in LA or in New York or Chicago or wherever in the United States to kind of buy into it. But then but then it's also if these customers do follow fashion on a regular basis and they know this brand and if it's an, a reputable brand, then that's more like they're more likely to buy into the product, I guess. So I base it on what my customer I feel like would want as well as what goes well with my own brand. So my brand is kind of more unique, I guess, modern, edgy, not edgy, but like modern minimal edgy. it's edgy edgy like edgy edgy or like edgy as in like it's still like tailored edgy still tailored edgy okay like i think like a chic edgy if yeah that's a thing. okay now i agree with that yeah so i try to buy clothes that kind of fit that um branding so i just make sure that everything i just make sure that everything that i buy kind of fits what um, I want my brand in Cassiope to be like. Okay. Oh, to represent. See, I feel like I would have an issue with that. I feel like I would just shop what I want and uh-huh. be like, okay, you guys will follow. Yeah. You guys will buy into to, this. To be honest, and I do, and 
I really do want to buy everything from the collection, <laughs> but I also have to think like, listen, like, would my customer want this? Is she elevated enough to be like, okay, I can wear this with, you know, whatever I have in my closet. That's true. Cause you can have a vision <clears throat> when you look at something and be like, okay, I can style it this way and this way and this way. But then a customer may not have that same vision. They'll probably <laughs> think what? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And I know, and I normally buy, especially this season or this uh, the fall winter season um, prior to like in August or something. I normally, I was looking at a lot of the collections and I was like, okay, so how do I, how do I want them to look? Like, do I want them to have like mini, mini dresses? Um, a lot of people are doing a lot of cutouts now where it's like sh- overexposing some, you know, some body parts, which is fine. And I like that, but I feel like some designers kind of go overboard and I feel like my customer, I want them to, I want them to feel sexy, but I also like that understated sexy where it's not too much yeah. re- revealing, you know, I like just a little bit. That's fine. But like, I feel like there's I, so many cutouts everywhere, even on parts, even on places where I'm like, oh, that's kind of like a little like down there. Like, are you sure? <laughs> but but no, but it's but it's a gorgeous outfit. It looks great. It looks amazing. I think my customer, as I grow my brand and as I grow my customer base, they'll love it. I think right now I just want to set a standard of what I want to showcase yeah. or what I want to buy and represent as my brand. So you have like those staple pieces. Then once you have the customer base, you can buy those like risque pieces, those yeah. kind of w- runway pieces. Exactly. That, yeah. yeah. I, and I and I do sometimes buy the one the runway pieces if it's in my budget, but um, for the most part, it's kind of, it's more my entire assortment is based on based on like. Coats, jackets, um, pants, and tops. Those really cool, yeah. like, tops. I buy, mostly I buy the more unique dresses than I do just, like, simple dresses. Yeah. So, in terms of, like, coats, tops, jackets, blazers, pants, shirts, I buy, like, the more essential styles. Like, I look at those, like, minimal, sleek styles has a little bit of edge to it. Like yeah. this is one top from this designer that I carry right now named Alexander. And it's like, it's like a draped ruffled top like top. And it's really, really cute. It's not, it's for next season. It's not this season. Um, or the one that's currently, it's not in my store right now, but it's, um, it's beautiful. And I think it takes like a very, I guess out there or extravagant woman, to kind of like wear it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like you would wear it, to be honest. Because you're very like, oh, you're very open when it comes to styling and fashion and all that stuff. So you'll wear, not that you'll wear anything, but you'll wear something. <laughs> <laughs> if you if it looks cool and it's cute and it's like, it fits, then you'll definitely, I feel like you'll wear it. Yeah. I like things that are form-fitting. Yeah. So, and this one is definitely form-fitting. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I just try to, I try to stick to what my customer and what my brand represents well, that's good because i kind of read somewhere too that a lot of like even retail stores but they'll buy like this one amazing piece mm-hmm. that's like kind of out there but not out there enough where you don't even take a look at it mm-hmm. but they'll buy like these statement pieces that what customer wouldn't necessarily buy mm-hmm. just to kind of bring them in to look at all the other key pieces that you have right which i think is great because I know I'll find pieces like that and I'll mm-hmm. be like oh, but then it'll be three thousand dollars <laughs> can't get that but then they'll have this other piece that you can pair with it that mm-hmm. is more in your budget exactly so it's smart yeah and and I the, my rule of thumb is to is wardrobing so I try to buy everything as if it's a wardrobe so I'll, I'll, if I'm buying mm-hmm. the pants I'm gonna buy the matching jacket if I no. if I buy the the top I'm gonna buy I'm gonna find a a pants that matches with it or I try to whatever based on the lookbook whatever they style it with I try to do that but also I'm thinking when I buy other designers I'm thinking of what I just bought and see if I can mix and match different designers different brands so that way it's not like so if I have like a small because right now I have a small selection of designers that I carry in my store right now so since I have that I have to kind of create a wardrobe for my customer to kind of show them this top is unique, but you can match with this and it will go with this. So that way I'm kind of dressing them or styling them as if they're in a retail store. So they, that way they're not, um, 
because I know with my store, it's more online. And with the price point that I'm in, most customers like to see it in store or like to at least have an idea of how they're going to style it. Yeah. So I try to do that part for them. Just show them like, hey, this is how you can style it if you buy this. Or if you have the same thing, the same um, additional piece in your closet, buy whatever the top or the dress or whatever and match it with that. Yeah. So that way you're not having to um, feel like, oh, what am I going to wear this with? Because I've always had that. When I shop, I always have that conversation with myself where I'm like, okay, this is cute, but what am I going to wear it with? Do I have anything in my closet? But see, that's a good mindset because I know when I shop with my mom, I'm mm-hmm. like, she's like, oh, I love this. I'm like, yeah, but what are you going to wear with? Right. What in your closet can you pair that with? Mm-hmm. Do you have something in your mind? Mm-hmm. It's like, you need to think of this. Mm-hmm. Just, you know, so you're not creating a whole new wardrobe. Right. You're like, you, you can justify the cost for what you're going to get. Exactly. Yeah. And I think what, what I try to do is also, um, even in like my product descriptions and my copywriting, I try to um, give like information in terms of like, I give information about the product, how it looks, what it, you know, everything, what the fabric is made of. But I also add another sentence where I say, you can pair it with this, this, and that. See, that's nice. Because yeah. I know the other reta- online retailers, they'll put it below and they'll have images like, oh, how to match this outfit. So I yeah. think it's great. Yeah. I do, and I, I do that also, too. Sometimes sometimes it'll show the entire collection. Sometimes it'll show other designers and things like that. And I try, but I try to, I'm trying to streamline my website to make it more um style i guess styleable if that's what like yeah. to kind of style everything to make it to kind of show pieces so if you're looking at a top and you go straight down to like the bottom of the page where that the product page you'll see like oh what is it match it with this or uh, people are wearing this or people will match it or people wear this top with this pant so i want to make it more like that so that way they don't have to really leave their the product page to go to another page. They can just open that in another tab and then add it to their cart seamlessly and easy. See, that's nice. Yeah. So I guess now the question is, how do you get there? How do you find the designers to put in your site? Yes. Okay. So there's a couple of things you can do. Um, now more than ever, like designers are looking for retailers to partner with. I don't call them as like, I don't you, you do, I don't see them as like, you know, oh, I'm buying this product to put in my store. You're building a partnership, a business partnership with them because obviously every season you want to buy, you. they expect you to buy from them every season. And um, so that's the type of partnership that I want to build with these designers. So what I use, so now, because a lot of us are still in the pandemic, Yep. We a lot of those designers or even some showrooms are using like digital platforms. So it's, they use this term called fidgetal, which is like a physical digital type thing, which is kind of interesting. But basically, there are platforms. There's Joy, which is kind of like an online digital wholesaling platform, which is what I use. And you can go on there. You sign up as a retailer and you can see a plethora of like designers from Colombia, from Paris, from London, from anywhere around the world. They don't have like all the designers, but they have a good amount. And what you will have to do is kind of connect with them. So it's kind of like think of it as like LinkedIn, where you have to connect Uh. with uh, like a professional to kind of reach out to them it's the same thing as this one so you have to connect with the designer or the brand basically it takes about like a while for them to connect with you usually they like to look at your website they like to look look at um just your like instagram social media all that stuff and then they'll like sometimes they'll even reach out to you and be like hey can you send me a sales deck meaning a little like pitch or presentation about your brand like what's yeah. your customer what's your target audience i tried to connect with um christopher kane who's like a big designer in new york uh london and they asked um their sales manager asked me for that information and you know it can be a it can be a lot to work on especially if you're just trying to do business but it's mostly these designers are wanting to know like who are your target audience who's your target customer who are you as a brand and do i really want to work with you so if it's a bigger brand they'll most likely want to know why or like if they can work with you because obviously they don't need your business you know? it seems so weird to me though like mm-hmm. i feel like you would want anyone to sell your stuff i mean but i mean i get it like you don't want it's all about um, yeah, the, uh, it's all about like 
I guess representation. Yeah. So say if you have the same vision or not. Yeah. If okay. my so mine is that my online retail is you know high end designer slash luxury fashion. Obviously, I mostly have the high end designer part, but not the luxury fashion. So okay. a brand like Valentino, who is old ultra luxury, one of the top luxury brands in the world, they want to see do you represent that they don't want to be in just they don't want to have their product stock in any old re, you know retailer yeah that's true it's kind of like chanel yeah it's kind of like chanel like yeah. chanel they only do leasing so yeah you'll only be able to see them in an actual store like neiman marcus Saks. um you won't see they're never gonna you're not gonna see the product sold online unless it's resale you're not going to see it in an online retailer unless they're doing like a partnership and they hardly do partnerships at all. So that's crazy to me not to have an online presence. It's Chanel. Especially now during quarantine. Imagine what their sales looked like. It's Chanel. It's I know. It's the exclusivity of it all. Uh, I know. It's the exclusive. Because <laughs> either way, even either way, you're still going to buy. You're still going to buy Chanel regardless. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's like, I get why. But yeah. for a retailer like me who loves the, the brand, who loves the brand, who loves the designer, who loves the style aesthetic, and I feel like it fits my store perfectly, it would they would never unless I have that reputation with mm-hmm. them or reputation in the industry, they're not going to want to do business with a brand like me who's just starting out. So that's why that's I always try to grow. Um, with more of like the smaller, more emerging brands, and then kind of try to tap into like the more established like yeah. um bigger brands that I know people are going to shop. So, but yeah, once you connect with them, um you are able to kind of see their lookbooks, their line sheets, you can contact their sales representative once they connect with you. Even sometimes though once they connect with you, they'll just email you right away and be like, "Hey, Thank you for connecting with us. If you have any questions, let us know, blah, 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 blah. And then they'll sometimes they'll send you, if the line sheet's not on their Azure platform, they'll send you the line sheet and the lookbook through the email. You can also go to, there are a lot of different showrooms now, like tomorrow um, showroom in London. There's, I think it's called um, 424 or something like that. Um, no, 427. <laughs> One of those. It's an Italian showroom huh. that has like Blaise La Milano, Ami, um, Emilia Pucci, a lot of these really cool, unique brands. Sally Laponte, like they carry these brands and they're kind of like a. So a lot of showrooms right now to kind of get more business, they do, they represent in terms of public relations and like press releases and branding and all that stuff. But they also carry the product as like a showroom wholesaling business so they represent the brand and you can like contact them and be like oh i know you carry this brand i wanted to see the line sheets and they'll send it to you directly and then you'll basically do business through that wholesaling partner without having to reach out to the brand in the meeting that we had prior or the meeting that we had this week um I mostly just talked with the brand themselves, not with the third party um, wholesaler. It's easier. I feel like it's easier that way because you don't have to really um, you don't have to really do much. And it's like you get to build a connection with the designers and the brand themselves. Yeah. When you go through a third party, it's mostly you're talking to the person who is who's doing business with that brand. And then they relay the information to the owners or the brand themselves and then it's kind of it's kind of inconvenient sometimes because you have to wait for them and then all this other stuff but but yeah a lot of other wholesalers are kind of doing this more digital platform where you can go on to you know if you get invited um it's not like you can just go on any willy-nilly you have to get invited (laughs) which is so funny now in this day and age so you have to get invited from the wholesaler they send you a link. You can go on the digital platform. If you have any questions, you can contact them specifically. And you can also create an order on there, on their like digital platform and send it to the person that you're working with. And then they'll get the order set and ready for you. And then you start the transaction process. So they'll okay. give you a purchase order. So it's, yeah, it's, I think now it's a lot more easier and it's like digitally convenient. But, um, it does take a lot of work to kind of like get those designers to kind of trust you, trust in your brand and like buy into who 
you want to represent you know yeah so yeah but it's 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 been a great it's been a great process and a good experience to kind of have that because even with the uh appointment that we had um that was pretty cool yeah so tell us how you got the appointment okay so so do I, do I say the designer? I'll say the yeah. designer. I'll say the designer. So Victor and Thomas, they're, oh, sorry, Victoria, Victoria. and Thomas. <laughs> I always get that. I always do Victor that. Victor and Rolf. Yes. That's why. There you go. Victoria and Thomas, they are a French brand, and I've been following them for maybe about two seasons, two, um, you know, I started following them tw- uh, fall, winter, 20, 2019, 2020 collection and i really like their like aesthetic i like how they are um i've always knew that they're like more going into like the sustainability socially conscious part of like fashion but still have that like luxurious climate and like you know still represent themselves as a luxury brand um so i've been following them and I saw that they were on Joy because they were never on Joy before. So Joy was, like I said, it's an online wholesaling uh, platform that you can connect with these brands. So I just connected with them. I connected with them (laughs) back in, I want to say August. (laughs) And then they just recently um, accepted my connection. So like recently, as in like maybe like two or three weeks ago, like two weeks ago, basically. Um, because I and it makes sense because they, that's the, now they're in their selling campaign. So selling campaigns is like they're trying to get the collections out to different designer or to different retailers, so that way they make their money. So yeah. they connected with me after their fashion show, and I had seen their fashion show, and it was you know beautiful clothing. I liked I liked it, um, but I wasn't sh- I wasn't sure yet. I was trying to figure out what which designers I wanted to buy for my um, for the next season the spring summer 2021 and I wasn't really I had already had in mind of other designers but I wasn't really thinking of Victoria and Thomas then um, they emailed me and I saw the email and I was like oh okay cool and I was good and I definitely wanted to reach out reach back out then the next day they called me which um, they called me on my business phone and it was um, Anna, the one that we met, the mm-hmm. one that we met with. Her, her name is Anna. Um, she's the showroom manager for Victoria and Thomas. And she said, oh, you know, we saw that you were looking at our line sheets because I guess they see who's looking at the line sheets, who's looking at the lookbooks, what type of activities happening on their own platform. Mm-hmm. And we wanted to set up a private appointment with you um, through Zoom. Obviously, they knew that we weren't in Paris. And, you know, usually some retailers stay after Fashion Week. They stay up until, I want to say, the middle of, middle of October to kind of do buying appointments where they go to the showrooms, see the collection in front of them and, you know, in person, see the movement, feel the fabric, all that stuff. So she said, look, you know, we want to do a Zoom appointment with you. And I was like, okay, um, let me send you an email so that we can set it up. They said, um, they, they asked if I wanted to do it last Friday or Monday. I said, let's do it Tuesday because I felt like Tuesday would have been an easier time for me. <laughs> and then um, when I scheduled, I was like, I asked Ariel, I was like, Ariel, do you want to like get into this? Do you want to be a part of this and kind of see how it's done? Because I know she's starting her own brand. She's going to have to learn. She's going to need to learn how to do this as well or to have an understanding of how to kind of go about yeah. the digital world of like what, how buyers are buying right now. So I thought this would be a great time. And also like, I, f- I wanted to like be legit so I wanted to- <laughs> I wanted to I wanted to be legit so I didn't want them to feel like oh we're just talking like it's weird so I asked her if she wanted to be a part of it and they were, you know she said yeah and she was like and we went on and it was that, that's how it started yeah as his assistant yeah I wanted her to be my buyer so but she said nah it would be no, better no because it's his brand and I don't have any part in it I'm just kind of here on the sidelines right. it's yeah because it's your vision it's your company mm-hmm. and it's cool because like other i've i've haven't i've never had a like digital appointment a buying appointment with other brands like i've requested maybe but like the time difference is too like like there's this, these two brands that are based in georgia and not in georgia like not oh not in the United States, in Europe, Georgia, Europe. <laughs> um, and the time difference is really like, 
it's off. Like right now, like if I were to yeah. do it the same time that we did the one from for with Victoria and Thomas, they would have been like fully in sleep and we would be fully, we would, we're fully awake. Yeah, obviously. Opposite. Yeah. So yeah. it just, it didn't make, it didn't make sense to do like a buying equipment. And so, so I sometimes just have to go based on the line sheets, based on the line sheets, based yeah. on what I see, um, in the lookbooks. So you kind of go blind and a lot of, yeah. a, a lot of retailers don't really, don't really do that. They like to see the product and feel it and touch it and all that stuff. Because it's much different to see something in person. That's mm-hmm. why I kind of like when retailers do the little video mm-hmm. of the model, like wearing it, then you kind of see how the clothing flows. Exactly. Because, yeah, I, I mean, I'm all for touching mm-hmm. fabric. I, I love to do that because yeah. the designer in me, I just need to feel it. Exactly. So and, I and, get it. And the, but I also I also see that we're in like we're in a strange time yeah. and it's like it's I think this is where the industry is gonna go, you know. Instead of having to go to 50, 60 different appointments in a week, but it's more beneficial for you too because mm-hmm. of the money to have to fly out to these places. Right. I mean, this has made it easier, mm-hmm. more cost effective, mm-hmm. and actually more sustainable because you're not using as much fuel to fly. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So. And I and I and I like how a lot of these designers and even some of these like you know showrooms are kind of digitizing everything, which I which is it's cool. They I mean they have to do that. It has to be um you need to still re- relevant. You have to yeah you have to be relevant and you have to kind of um go with what the industry's going with. Everything's yeah. becoming tech now, which is great i know for some people it's not but it's great I, i'm loving it but yeah um the meeting the meeting was so cool tell me about your experience what did okay. you how did you feel Let so me. i know i remember when you asked me i was kind of like oh i get to go because mm-hmm. you know it's it's exciting when you're first starting your brand yeah it's exciting to do these little things and mm-hmm. that's what we wanted to share too with mm-hmm. you guys but um i remember i trying to stay professional <laughs> and um we'll let you do all the talking i'm just there like yeah it's our goal. right but they were who was the guy who was what would you call that title um i think the sales director sales director he was great he mm-hmm. was funny he just is a full of energy mm-hmm. which was awesome because i know at the end of the meeting they their energy kind of went down but just because it was late there yeah but i you would never know that yeah and it's and these are like all french like people showing the collection and like you know sometimes people say there's like a bad stigma with the french like they're kind of rude but they were super cool like super nice so and i yay that they spoke english like yeah. I, I don't like to assume people speak english and mm-hmm. i don't feel like it they have to i don't mm-hmm. think that's fair to say like, well, I feel like I would need to know French just to have business with them and Mm -hmm. work with them. So it was kind of great that they didn't mind. I tried to slip in a little French at the end and be like, I kind of know a little. Yeah, we we tried at the end. At the beginning, I I I said bonjour, but they said hi. (laughs) That's how I felt like when I was in Paris anyway. I'd be like, hi, bonjour. And they'd be like, yeah, okay, you're you're American. We get it. So... But it was really cool. And then out pops one of the designers and I was just like... So so, so basically <laughs> it started off with the sales director, the guy, ball of energy, really, really cool, mm-hmm. like just down to earth. So we met with the showroom director first, which was Anna, Anastasia, which is her full name. And then she introduced us to the model, Anais. And the model's beautiful, gorgeous, you know, tall, slender, beautiful. And then he, um, then she introduced us to the sales director. I didn't catch his name, but he was just a really cool guy. I think his name was Luis or Louis. I'm so bad with names. Yeah. I'm, yeah. It's but bad. he was so like, he was like funny, but like very talkative, very just like outgoing. Yeah. And he like at the end, like he was going to show, he was, you know, going through the collection, telling us about everything. And then he said, oh, I have a special surprise for you. And then... Victoria of uh, Victoria and Thomas was in the zoo like she literally was like there and she said hi and I was like oh but my god just trying to stay like calm like oh we, we do this yeah we do but this but really we're like right and she's like a it's like a big deal to me because I like I said this is my first buying appointment with an yeah. uh, actual designer I've never actually spoken like with all the other designers I've never actually spoken with the designer directly but for this designer, obviously, she has a lot going on. She has a lot to do. I mean, Thomas wasn't able to come to the to the Zoom call or the Zoom appointment, but which is fine. Which is fine, but 
I'm sure they're super busy, but the fact that she took the time out of her day when it's like seven o'clock, seven p.m. over there, she's probably ready to go home after doing these buying appointments yeah. back to back to back. To take the time to kind of meet with little old me, like that it's, was cool. It's amazing yeah. to kind of feel like they're not, they don't have like their nose up. And right. Like, well, you know. Right. And they've been doing this for, I want to say eight years. They started in wow. 2012. So it's like they know who's who and what's what. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then technically she doesn't even have to even be there. She, like, she already had three of her, two of her, like, team, and I would have been yeah. fine because they were amazing. Yeah, the fact that you even had a model. I mean, yeah. honestly, I, I didn't even expect that. I mean, I don't know what I was expecting going <laughs> mm-hmm. in, but I, I felt special. Yeah. Like, we've, and, even through, like, just through Zoom, like, and at that, like, obviously there's not that intimate connection where you're in the sh- in their yeah. showroom, seeing their clothing, looking around, touching, feeling the fabric, and, like, looking at the model themselves. But, like, you felt, we felt special just her being there as well as just them being very intimate. Like, they asked us, oh, what else do you want to see? We have a huge collection. Like... We'll put it on the model. We'll put it on you the model. Decide. You decide. You know, like yeah. we want to do business with you. Like, just made it so, so, so special. And but not, um, like you felt pressured. Yeah, there was no pressure in like me wanting to buy. Even in fact, honestly, like just based on the the connections that we had and like just talking to them, I was like, I definitely want to buy into the collection <laughs> because because yeah. even them telling the story and showing me things that I didn't actually know about it and telling me the inspiration tell from a line sheet, like you needed to speak to them. Exactly, and I felt like okay. I I want to buy into it because of the collection, but also because they're such good people. I definitely want to like help them out and like support their business and, and have it support my business and yeah. create that partnership. So, so it was, yeah, it was great. Great experience. Very, great, great experience. I loved it. And then we'll just talk quickly about their collection because yeah. um, their stuff, what was cool is that you see on like the Vogue runway, mm-hmm. you see these two looks next to each other. And I right. remember when you're looking at it, you're like, oh, okay, maybe this one and this one. Oh, I like this. Mm-hmm. But then it's like, okay, that adds up like right. for your cost. It's and expensive, then, yeah. Then they're telling us that the looks that are next to each other are actually the same look, but the reverse side of it. Mm-hmm. All reversible. <laughs> all reversible. Like literally the stitching and all that stuff. If you flip it over, it's a different pattern. It's, it's a different like a completely stitching. Different it's a style. different style. Same like, silhouette, but you're having a completely different look, which mm-hmm, was great because mm-hmm. I know when you think of reversible clothes, you're thinking, okay, one size a print, one size a solid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but no, they took sustainability to a whole different level yeah well, yeah because you think okay i need to use organic fabrics or recycled materials kind of what angela was doing mm-hmm. but they're like no like you can buy more for less instead yeah. of buying two jackets you get one yeah exactly and so it was uh, it, i and that's kind of what sold me a lot too because mm-hmm. you know they're um all, i can just literally buy one jacket and then i have two you know so it was just it's great for you as a starting up yeah. online retailer, especially yeah. especially building the business with them. Um, I de- my whole thing is I want to make sure that I have enough connections to where like people trust me and like they can you know show or trust my brand at least, yeah. and they can you know if I tag them on social media, we you know retweet things like or we tag me or whatever the case may be, or even like hopefully once this all ends, like get an invitation to their shows. You know, that would be, be awesome. that would be awesome because I remember <laughs> <laughs> when I went to Paris in 2018, I tried to get into their show, but I couldn't get in. Obviously, I didn't have an invite, but it was, I mean, but to have that opportunity to meet with them now, like that's better than the show, to be honest. It was a one-on-one appointment over the over Zoom, but it was still like, with I felt designer. like I was there and it was with the designer too. Like, honestly, I felt like I was there. I felt yeah. like I was in the showroom just because, like, just the way that they, the energy and, like, the connection yeah. that we had and, like, how, like, they put the, how the video looked. It was through their phone, but it was still, like, it still felt like I was there and, like, you know, the model, like, she was talking about the collection. She asked, she kind of said, like, oh, it's, a, you know, it feels nice. It feels good. I was asking them, like, how would you style? I was asking the designer, Victoria, how would you style it? Or, like, what would you do to, like, cinch the waist? She would say, oh, put a belt, do this, do that. Just giving, like, inside details that I I can probably implement into my own for sure assortment when I start buying the collection and how you would style it. To, how, yeah, exactly. So it was a really uh, honestly, it was just 
first experience really good. Yeah, yeah, it was great. And I think, and I think for an emerging brand, it's definitely something that a lot of these people are, a lot of them are doing because they want to work with smaller brands out there because the bigger ones, some of them are probably not going to be around in the next. Well, I mean, who knows? But I feel like when you work with a smaller boutique, kind of like yourself, mm-hmm. online boutique, but yeah, yeah, online um, boutique, yeah. Yeah, um, I feel like you pay more attention to their brand you're able to buy a little bit more because mm-hmm. i feel like the bigger retailers they buy just a little bit of assortment and have like a, an abundance of designers mm-hmm. and you don't get that specialization you would with your store yeah exactly so, so yeah i think that's i think basically that's it like that's what like how um smaller retailers are doing it that's how i'm doing it and even for a designer, your like whoever's a designer out there that's trying to get a that has a brand that's trying to get retailers to stock you. What I would suggest, just to kind of go into that, um, <laughs> what I would definitely suggest is to look up Joy. Joy, it's J O O R Access dot com. Um, you, as a brand, I think you probably have to pay like a monthly fee to kind of showcase your designs and things like that i think that's how yeah, i don't know how I, much i wish i could talk about it more but i just don't have the product yet to yeah try it out <laughs> but, but once i do i can tell you on the you know designer side what it's like exactly yeah i'm, I'm not sure how much it costs to be <laughs> to showcase your collection on there um it could be between 50 to more than 100 bucks a what um, to have to like a monthly subscription or a monthly payment. Yeah, it could be it could be fifty bucks to more than that to like more than like maybe I don't know. You would have to kind of go on there and kind of check it out, check really out yourself. But also like you can also reach out to different um, wholesalers, uh, meaning showrooms. So some showrooms will definitely want to stop have your product and try to help you sell it, or you can build a relationship with them and they'll do that for you. But. Um, some showrooms are kind of like they have a certain aesthetic and they have a certain like idea of what type of brands they want to curate. So it's kind of like the same thing. It's kind of like yeah. the same thing. Okay. So um, you can reach out to many as you can reach out to a showroom that's either New York, Los Angeles, Europe. Um, if you reach out to a showroom in New York, they're only able to show or they have more connections in the United States than they do um, abroad. So you, mm-hmm. it would be good to have more than one showroom so you can have the showroom that's for the United States, a showroom that's for Dubai or, you know, the United, um, what is it? The United Arab Emirates or United Emirates Arab, whatever, one of those. <laughs> or a showroom in Paris to kind of, um, like a showroom business. But better in, outreach. Yeah, to have better outreach, to have more of like a global, like retail client, like retail um stockist i guess so it's yeah it's but also with joy you can um it's global as well so sometimes retailers can just like start following you or start connecting with you so they'll reach out to you without you having to reach out to them um which is nice which is cool too like for me like i reached out to a lot of designers without them having to reach out to me and now that i've been reaching out and connecting with a lot of designers designers are reaching out to me to to connect with them so that way i can stock their product which is great which is cool yeah but I'm very selective on who I'm stocking right now. Well, yeah, you're a smaller business. You don't have a huge the budget. funds yeah. Yeah, to accommodate every designer that you'd wish. But mm-hmm. that'll be in the future. And it's great to have these relationships. Very, very. So, yeah, that's what I... That's I guess that's what I've been doing. Yeah. That's... But now we need to get down to the budgets. So mm-hmm. I guess people are going to want to know what are the upfront costs when you're buying from these brands? Like, mm-hmm. what are you having to pay? For? Do you need to pay the whole, it's a wholesale price. That's what we were talking about yeah. in our second episode. If you remember. Um, so do you pay up front, like the whole cost? Mm-hmm. Does it vary for designers? I think they'd want to know. Yes. That. So it, it definitely varies. There have been times where, so their commercial terms, they say 30% up front once you make the order and then 70% once the order or the product is been produced and then for them to ship it. And then sometimes the commercial terms would be like, oh, well, you pay for shipping or they the shipping is in the wholesaling price, meaning that they hiked up the wholesaling price to accommodate, the shipping. accommodate the shipping costs. So you don't have to pay for shipping, but you, you will have to pay for 
customs that's what that's what it's coming from a different if it's coming from a different country, country you <laughs> definitely have to pay for customs and that's a whole another episode i went through it this week <laughs> but you can't take it from how it's going now because it's during quarantine so they have that's like different true. steps for customs so yeah you can't true. really speak on it in now. general but yeah. like during quarantine it's a nightmare yeah during quarantine it's definitely a nightmare yeah. um i will say certain shippers are easier than others like the one that's supposed to come in this week it's seamless oh it didn't seamless. come no it's it's it came it's coming today i think I, I feel like every time i see you, you say it's coming today but no it's been <laughs> but it, it was cleared easily okay so like okay. uh, like the other one, it took literally an entire week for it to be cleared, and then it shipped. It came in like yesterday or something. But, but what are there import fees? Yeah, there are import fees. So um, back to like any type of upfront cost. So you some you can negotiate these terms. So how with the two with two of the brands that I carry now, I asked for a net thirty. So a net thirty means. Um, you they you make the order, um, they produce the product, they ship the product, and then you pay them up front everything that you owe them, shipping, the cost of goods, all that, after 30 days of having the product. Um, the, um, retailers like Nina Marcus, retailers like um, Sass Fifth Avenue, Netta Porter, all of them do this same type of commercial terms or they request the same type of commercial terms sometimes they'll sometimes they'll come they'll do the you know 30 percent up front and then 70 percent afterwards uh, after know. the 30 days uh, no after the uh, receiving the product when the ship when the shipment is ready oh, or okay. sometimes they'll negotiate like 30 days after, 10 days after the product or maybe 30 days after the product has been <laughs> has been delivered so like you pay the 30 percent down to like get the order then you say oh i want to do a net 30 on the 70 percent so once the once the product has been delivered 30 days after that you have to make sure that you pay that 70 percent that you still owe and the reason why they do that is because um they want to a lot of retailers want to see if the product is going to sell if it sells and it sells out within those or not sell out but like if it sells a good amount within those 30 days at the re, at the retail price you're going to you can use that retail money or that money that you got just by sales to pay for the goods yeah because it's already sold why not use that money to pay for it and that's why a lot of people that's why a lot of retailers ask for it, either a net 30 or a net 10 or a net 15 because they want to see if they can sell it and then use that money to pay for yeah it's the, less of a risk for them there's less of a risk for them and then sometimes depending on your commercial terms depending on your terms you can a lot of if it's not selling you can say okay well if it's not selling we can we have the opportunity to return to vendor meaning they're going to return if the product is just sitting there and it hasn't been sold within those 30 days or within even like i don't know maybe 60 days sometimes you can return the product back to the designer and not pay them whatever else is old. That would be terrifying for me. I mean, I guess you could do that if you're a higher end designer, mm -hmm. but I feel like if I were to do something like that, mm -hmm. I would, well, hopefully it would sell. I mean, I wouldn't have that issue, right. but like if it didn't, like now I've, I'm losing a lot of money. Yeah. So it, then, it affects the designer because they only got partial amount and it, you know, when obviously that partial amount doesn't cover but then don't they have to give that back because they're giving the clothes back or do they get to keep it that's a non-refundable so the partial funding is non-refundable oh okay yeah so they keep that because oh, okay. they you know because regardless it's going to sell something is going to some either one or two items are going to sell mm -hmm. if, if they don't sell a huge volume if they bought a huge stock load like let's say i don't know a thousand pieces couple you know eight styles a thousand pieces whatever and it's distributed between their different stores or just having it online they have to some of it has to sell maybe not all of it so let's say like there's like 900 left because they only sold 10 pieces and it's been sitting in stock for like i don't know 30 days 60 days they're going to return it back because it's not going to sell it's close to the end of the the fall season so mm -hmm whatever percentage so whatever percentage that they've already paid the designer they get to keep that and then they're just not going to pay the rest of the 70 percent and 
you've already produced a thousand pieces or a thousand like items for this retailer for only 90 to come back whatever production cost that was you're eating that cost already mm-hmm. you're not like you didn't make any type of return profit. or profit off of that so that's the sucky part because yeah. some some retailers will do that and that's I mean, I get why, because obviously you don't want to have product that's just going to sit there and you have to mark it down. But I feel like for future, mm-hmm. for the future, especially for sustainability, just not to have all this waste, mm-hmm. because I know some designers, when they don't sell it and if they can't sell it on sale, they're not going to... They keep don't, it. Yeah, they won't keep it and they won't give it at a, even mm-hmm. a lower discount. They won't donate the clothes because mm-hmm. they still have an image to hold. Yeah, so, so they'll, they'll burn, burn it. it. Mm-hmm. And it's awful. So I read... Imagine a $36,000 Chanel being burnt. Yeah. After multiple hands, artisans, whoever created this item. Mm-hmm. And to all be burned without because it's, it's not selling yeah it's crazy 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 um i feel like you know if you didn't like give it to your employees they <laughs> give it to employees like give it <laughs> give it to them i mean i'm sure they worked hard they made it why don't i want to give it to them but some but like like no, like you I said some you know you, some designers or some brands have to keep an image and they don't want to you know they don't want to mark down their price because they're going to think, oh, it's accessible to everyone. They have they have yeah. this exclusivity, this exclusive yeah. mindset, which is I I, I agree I get with. Because if everyone had Chanel, it wouldn't be what it is today. Exactly. Because like, I know a lot of people are like, oh, I got Chanel. Right. It's like but, a status. It's like a status thing. Yeah. And I and I definitely agree that we have to maintain that exclusivity. But I also feel like it's a waste. It's a waste. But I, but I, additionally to that, I feel like. The way fashion is going now, especially with the newer generation coming up, the millennials, the new generation, no one's really buying Chanel or, I mean, they are, but they're not like, they're not buying it at the amount that they did when baby boomers were like growing well, not up. Yeah, I mean, we're still young. True. So we don't have the funds to do so, but True. I know people. But I feel like even, because I was reading no. this article, I know she's like, nah, don't even don't even go there. No. <laughs> but I was reading this article where like we're buying like a lot of millennials are buying for experiences. They're buying to go to travel, or buying a house or a boat or whatever. Yeah, but once they have all that and settle they down, need then they need their closet. <laughs> <laughs> so don't say stuff like that. <laughs> but no, I think even just so we don't have like an abundance of waste, I know more designers and online retailers mm-hmm. are doing trunk shows. So they're doing pre order so mm-hmm. they're not having all this excess stuff hoping mm-hmm. like okay maybe people will buy this right. they will know exactly who's gonna buy it mm-hmm. and how so, much to buy and how much to make i feel like it would be a great thing for mm-hmm. retailers to do instead of the net 30 trying to see like who's gonna buy it mm-hmm. and, um, I, and i think the good thing about it too is like because back in the day production production companies where they made like huge masses of clothing they would require you to create a certain amount and they still do but they also give you an option to be like okay if you will give this is a set price to make one style at a time and that's kind of like a pre-order process so like say they they finish the you know the collection so for example victor um victoria and thomas they finish the collection they're showcasing their sample pieces they are able to um, say you can pre-order this without having the full stock already made. Pre-order it Mm -hmm. and they'll know how much is being pre-ordered so that way individually they can make the amount that they need and the size that they need to sell to their customer. I know that's what you're planning on doing and that's a smart idea because you don't have to spend $100,000 for production um, without any form or any sort of like way of selling it yeah no no customers bought you no like no retailer has purchased the product you just you're paying that amount just to get the product just to get the stock in in hopes of customers shopping shopping it that's a way that's a that's a good way to go out of business well yeah because you don't know because customer buying habits change and i know Mm -hmm. a lot of buyers they go on okay well this is what sold last season Mm -hmm. but it's like yeah that's what sold last season they already have it you can't go on those same results Mm -hmm. i don't understand that logic Mm because whatever Mm -hmm. but um so for 
where was I going with this? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think now. Where was I going? Jesus Christ. Right. I think you, you're you trying to go, <laughs> trying to say like, um, I don't even know where you're going with this actually. We were talking about, I hate when this happens. Mm-hmm. You're like midway through a thought and it just we were talk- so we were talking about how the waste and like how that um yes, but then you okay. also- oh, yes. Okay. i'm it. so sorry okay so when you are into fashion like we are and mm-hmm. you look at the runway show you're like oh i want that i want that if you have to wait another six months to the product you kind of lose interest mm-hmm. so i think it's a great idea to right after the runway show designers retailers to have a pre-order mm-hmm. so you can see it and then be like oh and feel like one of the buyers. Right. You're like, well, I could buy straight from the runway. And then you're able to get more of those runway pieces because a lot of retailers aren't going to be, they're not going to buy it, like everything. Mm -hmm. So Mm -hmm. now you can decide what you want. You don't have to wait for a retailer to be like, well, this is all you're going to get. Yeah. And it's cool because even Moto Operandi is doing it right now. It's Mm -hmm. a, it's a huge retailer that does, their business is based on trunk shows. So they are doing that, but you still gotta wait six months in order for the product to ship to ship to you. Yes, but by that time you'll forget you ordered it, and True. then you'll see that you get charged for the other fifty percent of it, mm-hmm. and then it's kind of like a present. Oh yeah, it's like a nice surprise. Yeah, it's like oh yay! <laughs> Spending five thousand dollars, half of that's two two fifty, and then the other half is two fifty, and you're like, oh, it's a nice surprise. I forgot about it. Okay. Yeah, it's like oh, my fall collection the, is coming in. Right. <laughs> The perks of being rich. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, it's, I think, I think um, you're right. I think trunk shows do allow, give you the opportunity to kind of see who your audience is, who really likes the product. Yeah. It's, but uh, um, I think designers have to even, and not even like have to partner with anyone. They can do it up, do this on their own. But I feel like to get like a good audience, that's not already who, because you, the opportunity, or at least the idea is to, get new customers get Mm -hmm. you know build that customer acquisition by partnering with other like retailers designer uh yeah mostly retailers or whoever to kind of like get more customers or get a different customer audience that's kind of you know partnering with a retailer is kind of like I guess the better, like a good part, like better yeah. part, like whatever. Because you know. then you can feature emerging designers mm-hmm. and do like a pre-order, and then you can see how well they do. Mm-hmm. And then you can buy whatever yeah. is based on that. Yeah. And it's it's cool, and I think that's a better way to know what you should buy instead mm-hmm. of just going on what sold last season mm-hmm. because it's going to be different. Yeah. So there are a lot of really innovative ways on how to go about this process, mm-hmm. especially for a retailer as well as for a designer. Is just kind of finding and like real actualizing what do you want your business to stand for? How do you want to go about showcasing your designs or your collection to whoever your um, whoever who whatever type of retailer you want to do business with? Yeah, it's all about that relationship. And I think as you um, get an idea of who your who your audience is and like build those connections or those relationships and doing something really special for them, it will really go a long way and a lot of designers or a lot of retailers will want to buy your product, you know, in that way, in that regard, in that regard, like me, like I had no expectations going into this meeting, nothing. I was just kind of like, Oh, I'd like to see the collection in person, blah, it'll be cool. It'll come along. Let's look at it after seeing it, after meeting them, after talking with them and just having like a good connection with them. I was like, okay. I'm sold. <laughs> yeah. I want it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here. I'll take it. Like, it was just, yeah. It, yeah. It was good. And, and they weren't even, like what I said in the last podcast, I mm-hmm. can never explain myself. I can't sell you on a story that doesn't really exist. Mm-hmm. They weren't selling us on, like, a story. Mm-hmm. They were just explaining what was there. Like, if you were in person, you would see it and be able to understand the concept. They right. wouldn't need to necessarily be next to their clothes. Mm-hmm. But it was just great to hear more like I yeah. didn't, they didn't have to make up some weird story yeah, they have to they're... make up some bs story they no. just basically told what their inspiration was they understood that we're in a really strange time and they were like oh you know we're in a strange time we just wanted to create some some pieces that kind of reflect the energy of like overcoming the situation whatever yeah you know and it was just like and like even in terms of like 
understanding that not every retailer ha- may have the budget, especially with how fashion is going right now. Yeah. They understood that and they were like, okay, well, we can negotiate on commercial terms, on like minimums, things like that. And it was like, I expected you all to ask me for $5,000 as a minimum. I was like, oh, wait a minute. Well, yeah, because you had the issue, like, they're say that you need to spend a certain amount of money, but they were like, no, which was yeah, even better. It was better. I was like, yeah. that's cool. All right. I'll take it. So, but yeah, it was it was just a good experience. It was a really good experience. And we hope that you guys learned a lot. We hope that you're yeah. able to get a lot from this. Definitely, if you guys have questions, we're gonna keep we're gonna put our email in the description so you can yes. reach out to us and ask more questions. And um and yeah, I'm John. You can follow me at J Nuenko. That's J A Y N W A N K W O on Instagram and Ariel. I'm Ariel, and you can follow me on Ariel V Campbell. Ariel like the mermaid, V like Violet, C as of this oh C Campbell like the soup. <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah, like, subscribe, share, share, and I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed this. Lot. Yeah, I hope. And please ask us any questions that yeah. you want. We definitely are here to be as a resource for you guys. So that way, if you, you know, we want to help you guys build your own brand and actualize your own dreams. So whatever that looks like, however way you want to do it, definitely reach out to us and we'll be able to kind of help you along with that. Yeah. Yeah. So thanks again. Thank you. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.